Hey everybody, Jason here. I hope you're all doing really good. Today, I've got a little bit of a mystery box here to open. I believe this is going to be a mini PC from a company called Knopflink. Now, one of the first things that I noticed about this is that it does actually feel really heavy. This is going to be one of the products from this website here. This is knopflink.com, but I have no idea which one of these it is. It looks like they sell a few different models here. They've got their N600 5900HX, which looks like it has a stinking Ryzen 9 5900 in it. I really hope it's that one. Oh, I'm gonna end up cutting myself because I'm so excited to open this. All right, here we go. Drum roll, please. Which model is in this box? Oh my goodness. Fellers. This is starting to look a lot like the one on top of the website, right? Let's get this thing out of here. You have got to be kidding me, guys. Seriously? This is their M500 model. Or S500. So it says here that this is the S500 Plus model. It's going to take a 19 volt DC input. And it says 4.74 amps and also 6.3 amps. Now, the S900 Plus is not on their website unless I just haven't dug deep enough yet, but this does have an R9-5900HX, so I believe this is actually a Ryzen 9. Really? So on the back, we have four USB ports. We have standard display port as well as HDMI. We have standard gigabit ethernet, and then we also have two and a half gigabit ethernet, which is like, hey, cool. And then lastly, we have a standard audio jack. On the front, we have a standard USB-C port. And then we also have two USB 3.2 ports. And I'm not completely sure, but that right there might be uh, a little paperclip hole. Let's just go ahead and leave that alone. Now, as bad as I want to hook this up, like right now, what else do we have in the box? Hopefully a big old hunkin' power supply. Oh, man. I haven't been this excited in a while. Like, I feel like I'm opening a computer motherboard box. I really do. So we have this silky soft bag here that's going to have a power supply in it. And like I hoped, it's got a big old honking power supply. The power supply says it'll accept 100 to 240 volts at two amps. And it has an output of 19 volts at 6.32 amps. And I am really pleased to say that it is actually heavy. I mean, it's not like a cheap flimsy power brick that has dishonest stuff written on the outside of it. It seems legitimate. Also inside this box, we have what looks to be a wall mount adapter, which is totally freaking cool. This is going to be the hardware for that wall mount kit, I believe, because they seem to slide in there rather perfectly. I believe that's the deal. Now, lastly, this is a serial ATA cable with like the ability to power it from something else. Now, before I just go blindly hooking this up, I wanna check and see if I'm in for any surprises. I'm gonna see if I need to be adding a SSD to this or RAM or anything, because I, I do realize that it looks like you can buy this without the SSD or RAM. All right, so let's see what we got inside here, fellers. I think we just lift it up right, I think we just lift it up right here. <laughs> what do we have here? All right, so, so far, I'm really liking the design here. We have the Wi-Fi antennas fastened to the top side of the case here where we have actually got gaps in the metal, so that's way cool. It looks like this unit came loaded with a 512 gigabyte SSD, and then the RAM, let's see, what, uh, what did they stick in this thing? We have one stick of 16 gig, totally cool, so we've got 16 gig of RAM and 512 gig of SSD. So the little serial ATA adapter that they sent along with this thing, it uh, very clearly would plug here and then here for power. And then it looks like we could actually add a full size hard drive or you know full size two and a half inch serial ATA drive. Beneath this motherboard here, I believe there's another slot for another SSD. And also this unit is pretty stinking heavy. And from what I see online, most of the weight is actually the heatsink to keep that nice CPU cool. All right, so I know it has memory in it. I know it has an SSD in it. It is time to plug this thing in and see what it is all about. Now, I'm gonna be hooking this thing up right here at the bench because right now I primarily, I just, 
I use my laptop here at the bench. It stays open here all the time. It gathers dust. It takes up space. And while I'm sitting here flinging underfill all over the place, I'm flinging stuff on this laptop. It has no business having a permanent home right here. All right, so I'm pretty much ready to hook this thing up and see if it comes with an operating system. Ooh, I actually really like this charger. So to start out here, I'm only gonna be connecting the HDMI cable. We are going to need my keyboard and mouse dongle, which is right over here. That's pretty much it. We need display, keyboard, mouse, and power. And now, since this display sucks really bad, I'm gonna be using this one for this demonstration. Let's see if it came with an operating system, shall we? Press the button to power on. The thing on the front is actually a light and not a paperclip hole. That's good to know. It's booting Windows 10 right out of the box. Seriously, these guys are gonna go and make my life easy. I thought I was gonna to have to start by loading an operating system. How about that? Username's administrator. I like it already. I'm gonna head right into the system information and see exactly what it is detecting here. It says right here that this is an AMD Ryzen 9 5900HX with Radon graphics and 16 gigabytes of RAM. This machine should show like a ton of available CPU cores. So I'm just gonna go in, in here under performance and have a look. This tiny, itsy bitsy, tiny little miniature PC is actually reporting 16 CPU cores. Now, I think it only actually has eight, but it has 16 logical cores. So I have plenty of processing power here to capture the screen and do this and not sit here with a camera. All right, I've just about got some capture software set up on this thing. We are showing recording encoder, AMD, which I really like that it's got hardware encoding. Okay, I just clicked start recording on Open Broadcaster, which is gonna start putting a little bit of a load on this machine to begin with. But I mean, come on, we have eight cores. It should be able to handle it. So it's looking like there's only 60 gig of free disk space. What is that? Oh, it's actually partitioned. They made a, they made a hundred gigabyte C drive and then the rest of it's allocated to the D drive. This will most likely get redone before I permanently install this thing. So first I'm just gonna try this thing out with some general browsing. I'm gonna go ahead and stick Chrome on here so that I can see straight. Boy, this thing is actually really snappy. And keep in mind, while I'm doing this, we are still capturing the screen. So this thing is managing to capture everything I'm doing as well as crank away at what I'm doing. Now I am starting to hear the fan a little bit again. All right, so there we go. Google Chrome is installed. Now let's go, um, I'm going to go ahead and throw VirtualBox on it. All right, here we go. Next, let's see how fast this thing will install. I'm just going to keep the default options here for the most part. Once I'm all done with this review and everything and I decide that, yeah, this thing is going to support my life here at the STS workbench, I'm going to probably go ahead and wipe this thing and reinstall it clean anyways for many, many different reasons. All right, there we go. VirtualBox is installed like, man, that is fast. So for many of you, it's going to become really clear, really fast that I'm not really a good person to be doing like a performance spec type of review. I'm more of a content creator. And for me, what's more important about this device, it's going to be how it performs with like USB peripherals hooked to it. Like, you know, what's it going to do whenever I start chunking large amounts of data over the USB ports? Let's just toss some Adobe Premiere on here, shall we? All right, here we go. Start installing. We're sitting here downloading it like 22 megabit and 100 megabit and stuff. We're not gonna use Wi-Fi right now. This thing has real ethernet. So let's hook this thing up to gigabit ethernet. There we go. Now that we are hooked up to a proper network connection and not using smelly Wi-Fi, eh, 300-ish, that's, I guess that's okay-ish. Maybe Adobe's slowing us down. All right, I have Adobe Premiere on here. Now, while that was installing, I noticed that I sat this thing right up against this monitor base and block the cooling fan. So that would explain why I'm starting to hear the fan run. So I'm gonna connect my USB 3 hard drive here to one of the 3.2 ports on the front. And I think I've got maybe six gigabytes here to work with. So let me just copy over what I have so far. 
All right, I got this test data put over here. Now let's see how Adobe Premiere is going to like working with a video project, shall we? Let's see, left link review. Boy, you know, it's got the feel of a desktop. It, it seems to run extremely well. Oh man, look at it sliding around. That's actually not too bad. All right, I'm just gonna play back here and see what we get. Hey everybody, Jason here. I hope you're all doing really good. Today we're gonna to be working on this thing here that's just gonna test out my audio and see if I can leave my air conditioner running today. Shall we? Not shabby. So how long is this? So I have six minutes and 34 seconds of video. Let me just try to encode this and see what we get. We are gonna to go to export media. What in the world? Okay, Adobe Premiere is totally different. They decided to do this to me just for this. So I'll just select high quality HD, H264. So six minutes of video. And go. So we are looking at seven minutes remaining. I wanna keep a real close eye here on GPU performance, CPU performance, and also temperature. Uh, the GPU right now is at 65 degrees C. It's literally encoding pretty much just as fast as I could watch it. And it's sitting here doing it at like less than 50%. And that is while also screen capturing to record this video that we're doing right now. I'm impressed. I'll be really honest. I did not expect this thing to sit here and encode video at an acceptable rate. I think that this thing will actually do the amount of uh, capturing that I need um, to, to support what it is that I'm doing here. 20 seconds remaining. It's literally gonna encode video at basically a minute, you know, one-to-one. -one. That is at the quality that I'm dealing with and with the number of tracks that I'm dealing with. You know, I imagine different complexities of things and effects and stuff are gonna change the speed of that. But I mean, come on. And there we go, it just completely finalized that file. And now I will have a completed encoded project here. You know, here it is. There's the whole thing. Here's my review, exactly where it's at now. And they're just, this thing is like really snappy. You know, it has, it has the feel of like a, a full-size desktop. So how about capturing video? So for this test here, I'm actually gonna take this camera here and like, hook it there. And what I'm going to do is figure out how well this thing is going to capture uh, 1920 by 1080p video at 60 frames per second. So we'll just disconnect the external hard drive. We do not need that or any hit anymore. And let's hook up our Logitech Brio camera. All right, it says device is ready. So the drivers are installed. Let's see if we can use it for a camera now, shall we? And there we go. We're switched over. Uh, what's going on here? We've got skipped frames due to encoding lag, 38. You know, I didn't check that before I switched and started actually using this thing to capture, but I mean, I have no lag. Totally freaking sweet. Okay, now what is the CPU doing while we're capturing here? Even if this thing is behaving like complete total crap, there is still like a dozen different things that I can change and, and and do to try to cause it to lose less frames or to get it to capture video faster. But I mean, right out of the box, I'm not needing to tune anything. It's sitting here, it is capturing. Really? This is cool. What if, I mean, just hypothetically speaking here, <sighs> setting up device. All right, let's go ahead and add one more camera to this scene now, shall we, video capture device. And there we go, we have microscope. Ah, yes. So it's been sitting here recording for two minutes and 24 seconds, and I have hardly any lag here at all. I mean, other than, come on, 30 frames a second on this camera, but this thing performs extremely well. I have dropped zero frames due to encoding lag. Like. I have recorded YouTube videos on way, way less. I'm not gonna abuse my laptop anymore. This is totally cool. Thank you, Knopflink. Thank you so much for sending this to me for review. I hope you like my video. How about the microphone? Do we have an audio input? 
it has a jack on the back of it that is labeled headphones. Hopefully we've got an audio input. Let's see here. And for that, we're going to pick microphone, HD audio device. Ooh, we're away. All right, so I've just adjusted that just a little bit. And now I've got the audio and the video sources coming directly into this thing. And it looks absolutely fabulous. If I wanted to, I could have the microscope on here. I'm literally recording this. I'm recording the sound. I'm recording the microscope and the C Oh, and I'm capturing the screen now. And the CPU usage is literally sitting at 13%. It can absolutely freaking do it. Now, aside from using this thing for recording videos, and then the occasional editing. Um, it's also really important for this thing to be able to run all of my tools here at the bench. So as far as board views and schematics, I primarily use FlexBoard View from pldaniels.com and I also use ZXW's tools. Now, I know Paul Daniels somewhat personally, so I really trust his software. ZXW tool, on the other hand, it has this way of like running for a week or two or three weeks and then all of a sudden Windows Defender pops up and removes it and detects it as a virus. And it's just, to run ZXW tool, I do this on a virtual machine. I am going to grab my dirty tin folder, which is a filthy, filthy, dirty, nasty copy of Windows 10. And I don't care if it gets overridden with viruses. So we're looking at about 80 or 90 megabytes a second for the transfer rate, which is ish for this external drive a hooky dokey so that just finished transferring and now I'm going to see if I can just add that machine wouldn't that be nice Woohoo! so here we've got a dirty tin machine I'm going to click on start now while this is booting I would like to keep an eye on task manager here uh, see what we're doing for memory usage and see what we're doing for the CPU usage restoring virtual machine what's task manager say about this task manager says that this machine is basically freaking idle, which is totally cool. Now let's fire up ZXW tool. Just ignore the crummy audio. That's completely normal. Now I do hear the fan speeding up just a smidgen, but it went right back down. And again, like it put load on some of these cores, but the machine sitting here basically idle and now i've got zxw tool opened up i'm going to have a look at like just say up let's open up an iphone 12. and here we go we've got the iphone 12 opened up now i haven't did a whole lot with trying to get the graphics to run much smoother on a virtual machine so i do expect the graphics to be a little laggy on the virtual machine next we're going to try flexboard view so that'll be pl daniels oops I'm already a licensed user, so I'm just going to go ahead and download this. We'll take the stable one, Paul. Holy crap, only 16 megabit? What are you, like, uploading on dial-up? Okie dokie, I have FlexBoard View installed, and I've got some data loaded on here that we can use to test it. It pops up lightning fast. Now, let's go ahead and load up some data. Let's just grab an iPhone 7. And it's saying the PDF don't exist because I don't have that set up yet. And man, oh man, does this thing run it. Well, you know what? Honestly, I think I've seen enough. I've decided that this thing is going to be installed here at my workbench, and I'm going to use it for recording YouTube videos as well as running all my tools. So right here is where I have decided to install this thing. So honestly, I could probably just stick it right there. I mean, and be eternally happy. But uh, this thing, it came with a wall mounting bracket. And I'm thinking I might actually mount it on here, except if I mount it here on the front side of my bench, I'm gonna be like, you know, trying to get under here to plug stuff into it. So to save space, I think it would make it much nicer if I were to just mount it to the back of the bench. How do I feel about USB cables sticking up in the air? You know, like, is anybody gonna walk by and snap it off? Maybe I'll go, yeah, just under there. Wait a minute, which side was the cooling fan on? This side, through there, you can see that big old heatsink down in there. The whole entire thing is heatsink. That's why it's so heavy. 
So yeah, I'm gonna mount this just like that and that'll clear off the entirety of this side of the workbench. All right, now for these crazy little slotted flat-headed screw standoff post things they sent. I'm gonna carefully thread these in right here. There we are. And now this beauteous little miniature PC should slot right in here and on she goes. Sweet. Oh yeah, this is gonna be so much better. Heck yeah. So that gives me my recording PC as well as four USB 3 or something ports out front, a toaster for external hard drive and a back mounted PC. But I have some cleanup to do as far as cable management and whatnot. Okay, so I've just about got everything all set back up. Now, interestingly enough, through the first testing on this thing, with this being a mobile CPU, it was actually set to balance mode rather than high performance. So a lot of my tests and things may have actually not been valid since this thing was set to run in just like a balanced energy consumption mode. Now, at first I was worried that this computer was gonna have trouble with 4K since it doesn't have like a dedicated GPU, but running it just as like a desktop here and doing my normal everyday tasks, it is like smoking fast. Now to run this screen in 4K while using Open Broadcaster to also capture at 1080p 60 frames a second, I will need to be really mindful of my resources because this thing will wind up being starved of resources and wind up dropping frames. For instance, here is most everything that I would normally have open while recording a video and it actually does a pretty staking good job. We're recording, you know, we don't we don't have any lag here. We got a full 60 FPS. But if I start open up utilities like, oh, let's see, Flexboard View would be a good one. This thing really likes to use my GPU, don't it, Paul? So here we've got Flexboard View open. We're gonna keep an eye on this number up here, this time to render frames as well as the missed frames. And here's where being careful really comes into play. So Flexboard View opens right away. We jumped up to 10 milliseconds to render a frame. And I mean, we've got it open. This actually isn't too bad. Oh, oh, look at that. I moved the whole window and this thing fell on its knees for just a second and it dropped some frames. Now, when I said I have to be careful when running this thing in 4K, I'm actually previewing the open broadcaster screen so if I actually minimize Open Broadcaster and get that off the screen, we should actually see a difference in how fast thing, this thing is capturing. In fact, if we keep an eye right here, let's just watch the GPU usage. We'll see right now just a normal capture. It's hanging around, you know, 40-ish percent. But if I put the Open Broadcaster screen back up on this 4K display, it just starts pegging out the GPU. If it's really an issue, I could always run this display at 1080p. I could possibly attach another display to the display port or maybe USB 3 and run that off to the side, possibly off of the GPU altogether. But at any rate, this is a really lightweight, but yet super powerful PC that thanks to that Ryzen 9, I think it's gonna do everything that I need to do it here as long as I, you know, stay mindful that it does not have a dedicated GPU and I just really watch the resources. I mean, I'm sitting here doing this right now and I am at zero drop frames. That is way cool. So how about one quick benchmark before we go? So for the benchmark, I'm gonna be using user benchmark. This software is going to test the processor, the graphics, the drives, the memory, the USB drives and skill bench, whatever that is. So here we go. almost 500 megabytes a second on that SSD. I actually was not expecting that. Completed. So here are the results from the benchmark test. Basically it says gaming, no stinking way. Uh, desktop, nuclear submarine. Yeah. Workstation, no stinking way. So basically for processing power, this thing is freaking excellent. But when it comes to graphics processing, it's rated to be poor. That's pretty well to be expected out of a machine that doesn't have a dedicated GPU. 
The SSD does seem like it performed really well on the benchmark. There was times where I felt like it was like pausing and, and hesitating. So I may actually try a different SSD in this thing. So here we are testing this with Cinebench and I'm not gonna let this completely finish running, but I just wanted to show you that this Ryzen 9 5900HX up against some of these other CPUs on the list is actually pretty stinking decent. We're up above the Intel Core i9 and we're just below a freaking Ryzen Threadripper. So there you have it, folks. This thing is absolutely gonna do pretty well everything that I needed to do here at the bench. I may actually add a second monitor to see if there's anything I can do about this little anemic GPU issue. So if you're interested in buying one of these things, I will leave a link to purchase in the description below. And um, that's it for now, everybody. I really thank you all for watching and uh, thanks for subscribing to my channel and making it possible for me to do this sort of thing. I'm just, I'm really grateful. Thank you all, have a good day. So here I'm running a Linux virtual machine that is hosting a Minecraft server. It is also running Minecraft while watching a YouTube video and also exporting a camera roll from a customer's cell phone. Yeah, there we go. That is with a virtual machine running a Minecraft server. That is with three U tools backing up, oh, I don't know, some gigage. And this thing still runs cool to the touch. I mean, I dare say that phone is actually warmer than my mini PC. Sweet. Oh yeah, one more thing. I cannot believe I did not do this first. Here we are looking at the BIOS setup. Since the video is already pretty long, I'm not gonna spend much time in here. And also I don't have HDMI capture, but oh my goodness. You know, I haven't even really been into the BIOS setup on my laptop. I'm willing to bet that it's not anything near as in depth as this for crying out loud. There are enough settings to keep me busy here for a really long time. But since this video is already so long, I'm going to go ahead and cut it short right there. This is standard PC stuff, but uh, I'm really excited. Look at this thing run. This thing can do it. I don't think it can capture and do this, but...